and I was just um absolutely devastated because I thought these people were my friends and so I, I literally for those of you who don't know October is bullying awareness month and so before October ends I kind of wanted to talk about this concept because a lot of times when people think about bullying you think about kids running around the playground or those movies where like there's a mean guy shoving a kid into a locker which like obviously unacceptable but unfortunately there's a lot of people who just like don't grow up and those kind of behaviors kind of follow them into adulthood and it's so unfortunate bullying is one of those things where like you hear it and people just automatically yeah yeah yeah, that's bad we need to stop it we need to do something about it but so many people like don't follow that up with actions so many people don't make it a priority when they should when they realize like their children is partaking in that activity or they do it to other people as they get older or even with like this newer concept of social media like the kind of comments that people feel like is acceptable to leave on people's videos whether it's a content creator or someone that's just like posting a video for fun but doesn't really want to become their job like it's crazy the kinds of things that someone will just put their whole chest, you know, deem is acceptable to say, like, it, it's crazy. And I think cyberbullying is a whole issue in itself that I might do, like, another future episode on. But I really want to talk to you about bullying now, you know, while it's still Bullying Awareness Month. And just kind of, you know, not only raise awareness about, like, the different kinds of forms that it can take, but also let people know, like, if you do feel like you are being targeted or do feel like you're being mistreated, like, just to kind of show that you're not alone, you know, it doesn't matter how old you get, people can still bully you. You can still be a bully. It doesn't matter how many followers you get. Like, it it happens to everyone, which is so unfortunate and so unfair, and I really wish it didn't. But hopefully this make you feel a little less alone. So um, I wanted to ask my friend Brenda, when you think of the word bullying, what do you think of? So I, I guess I think of bullying as somebody's actions or words that are meant to intimidate, um, control, degrade, harass, just like make you feel like you are less of a make person. You feel bad. Yeah, make you feel bad. Yeah. I've never understood people who like genuinely went out of their way to act like to that. do that. There's so many things that you could be doing during exactly. the day. Like yeah. why it makes no sense. Like I'm bu- I'm so busy all the time. I I don't have the time to physically like wish harm right. on somebody else like yeah i don't know and i i i think that you said you said this to me a little bit earlier before the episode even started that it really all starts with the playground it starts at the playground elaborate a little bit more i just me. feel like like you were saying you know when we think of bullying bullying we think of um little kids that are being mean to each other and i definitely think that that's where it starts and i think that especially the people that are in a position of authority the teachers or even other kids because i remember being a little kid and being like this isn't okay like there was something in me from when i was a little kid where i'm like i'm gonna defend people that are being bullied I love that. um but i think that it starts in the playground and if it doesn't get addressed it continues into adulthood yeah. whose responsibility do you think that is like to nip it in the butt Because I hear a lot of different answers. I definitely think that it starts with the parents. Like if the parents are setting a good example, it's likely that, you know, the kids will follow that example. But even then, like you could have, you could be a great parent and you could have a child that, you know, might be expressing themselves through bullying or whatever. So I think it's uh, the people in authority, the people that can say this isn't okay. Because I read something that bullying can be addressed and it can stop like almost half of the bullying that happens in classrooms can be stopped within 10 seconds if somebody in authority addresses that situation absolutely yeah i also feel like you know we we were both teachers but we were high school teachers so a lot of these behaviors and like mentalities are kind of set in some of these kids already which is so unfortunate right but i feel like you know there's so many kids who think that it's cool or fun or funny and i even think that like their peers their peers might not be in positions of authority but I think that if some random kid in the middle of class was like, that's not funny, like, cut it out. I feel like, you know, a, a lot of these kids are doing it for, for the ego, for right. the praise, for the laughs that they think that they're going to get. Right. And I think that even just like if one kid were to speak out and be like, that's not cute. I feel like it would wound their, it could wound their pride enough to where they're like, 
and they just like go back into their shells they're like okay and that just kind of dissipates and i think that could be so helpful but i know so many kids are afraid of that like i i didn't see bullying a lot when i was a teacher i mean i only taught for four or five years um but i did have one girl come up to me and say that some girl in her course class was being really mean to her and was bullying her and immediately i was like oh absolutely like let me get in contact with her parents let me talk to your teacher who, because I guess she just felt comfortable talking to me instead of the teacher that it was happening in their class, which is right. fine. You yeah. know, every kid has like that their teachers teacher. that they feel comfortable with that they don't feel comfortable with. It's fine. I'm glad she told somebody. Right. But as soon as I said, yeah, like we're going to nip this in the butt. Let me contact her parents. She immediately was, no. Like, what do you, what do you mean? No. She's, well, I don't, I don't want her to know. And I'm like, well, she has to know it's not okay. Like what? She's, no, I, I don't give you permission to talk to her about it. And I'm like, okay, then what, what do you want do? me to do? <laughs> yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't know what other actions there were. She's like, oh, well, just forget I ever told you anything about it. And I'm like, I can't do that. Like, right. this is my job. I'm a mandated reporter. Like, there's so many things that I have to look into for your well-being right. to make sure that you're okay. Like, that's not an option anymore. And she got genuinely upset with me. And I'm like, I don't, like, you, you came to me because you wanted to stop, but you don't want me to talk to her. I don't know what other options you want. Right. And I feel like, you know, on the other hand, like she, she like she came to me and she genuinely wanted me to do nothing. But on the other hand, I've seen a lot of kids leave comments on my social media videos talking about how, well, I was bullied and my teachers didn't do anything about it. And I'm like, well, did you talk to them? Well, no, but they knew what was happening. Right. How are they supposed to know? I do feel like sometimes, like I just remember being in classrooms where I felt completely safe and where teachers made it a point to, you know, from the very, and and because of this, I made it a point from the very beginning to tell my students, this is a safe place. We take care of each other. This is a family. We are not making fun of each other. And so I, you know, I made it a point to create that kind of environment where it was like, this is unacceptable. But I remember being in classrooms where teachers didn't create that kind of environment and where they be, maybe they didn't know exactly the extent of you know what was happening exactly but they knew that there was unkind comments unkind things happening in the classroom and then they didn't do anything see i mean more of like and i i I learned after i left the classroom like i still kept in touch with some of my students and my kids would be like oh this person was so mean to this kid and i'm like really because it would never happen in my room right but it would happen in other places Mm -hmm. And I I think a lot of times kids and students and even parents of those kids assume, well, you're with them all day. Well, no, I'm with them for an hour or an hour and a half. And they're always like focused on schoolwork or if they're doing group work, you know, it's usually groups that they pick, you know. Right. How, How am I supposed to know that at lunch... Susie is mean to Lucy if they don't come and talk to me about it. Right. And, you know, it's no one's fault except for the bullies, of course. Like, they are choosing to act that way. But I think that a lot of times teachers get, like, the blame for, oh, well, I was bullied or mistreated and no one did anything to me about it. And it's just kind of assumed that the teachers know it's happening. Right. But that's not the case. You know, I had 112 students per semester. Right. Right. I, that's over 200 kids per year. Like it needs to be communicated. Right. I don't have eyes everywhere, right. you know? And I, I think that I, I just wish more people kind of knew that. Because if I knew that some of my kiddos were being bullied, oh my gosh, I would have immediately like hopped on that. Like one time I actually had a, a kid who was being bullied by a teacher. Have I ever told you about that? Mm-hmm. This actually might have been that our happens. substitute. This might have been your substitute teacher, substitute actually. Teacher? Yes. Okay. I, I think this was before we met. Okay. I'm pretty positive. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to... Okay. This was this was like years ago. Uh-huh. This was my first year at our school. Yeah. So I had... First of all, I had like a really big success story with a kid who he was failing. He wasn't coming to class. He was getting into activities that he should not have been a part of. And it was with this other kid that, I, that was in our class and they would go at it all the time Mm -hmm. all the time and one time it almost got very physical and like little me was like let me (laughs) insert myself into this situation yeah and i i pulled them both into the hallway 
And I just was like, gave them the whole spiel about like, you're better than this. What are you doing? Like, you could do so much more productive things with your time. And like, don't go down this road. And one of the kids just like blew me off. But this kid listened and he started coming to, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> he started coming to Smart Lunch and he started turning in his work. And like, he went from like a 40 something in my class to a high B. That's awesome. And like, I'm already gonna start crying. Like, I was so proud of him. Um, and there was one time during my planning period that, you know, there's our planning period. I didn't have any, any kids or anything like that. And I saw him wandering the halls. And I called his name. I'm, I'm just gonna give him Connor because that's like my go to. Yeah. Like, Connor, what, what do you, I know you don't have class over here. Like, what are you doing? And he just like kind of like slumped in and was like, hey, Miss Rogers, I kind of got kicked out of my class, but like it wasn't even my fault. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, there was a kid and I, I'm really positive it's your class. It was your class, but like you weren't there that day. He's like, there's a kid in my class who like whenever I sit near him, things happen and I get in trouble and like I can't control myself yeah yeah I remember I can't control myself and this sub was trying to make me sit next to him and I don't want to get in trouble and I don't I don't want to get in a fight um and I kept trying to tell her I can't sit next to this kid and she told me that I was just being a problem and she told me that I was just being a nuisance and I told her I'm not sitting next to that kid because I'm trying to do better and when he wouldn't do it she kicked him out told him he was good for nothing and oh I started getting so angry so angry and so like I dropped everything that I was doing and I marched up there and I walked in and immediately the sub thought I was a child um and started lecturing me about skipping class and I just kind of held up my staff badge and she's oh and then the whole demeanor changes and the tone changes right she's like oh you're an adult blah 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 and she like comes up to me and just goes can you believe I'm stuck with these kids all day? And I'm like, what do you mean by these kids? She's like, you know, this is like definitely the delinquent class. And like my heart just dropped. Because the students were listening probably. Yeah, oh, they were all listening. Yeah. Like they were all listening. This was right in front of them. Right. And I was so angry. And honestly, like I saw red and like I just... Like, you know when you get so mad and you just kind of black out a little bit? Yes. I don't even remember exactly what I <laughs> what said, you said yeah. but I know. Or like, you said I it, it did something. Her. Yeah. And from that day on, kids from that class that I've never seen before would come specifically to my room in the morning. Like, hey, Miss Rogers. And talk to, to you. Yeah. you. And I'm like, <gasps> oh, that's, that's, oh. I think that's the thing with bullying. Like, you need... You need needs, to know. You don't it need needs to know. be addressed, but often it needs to be addressed by the person that is happening to because otherwise we never find out. But then when exactly. it is happening and other people see it, like, it's, it. then you need an advocate. You mm-hmm. need somebody that is standing right. up for you or it's not going to stop. And so in this case, you were you were there. For yeah, that. and I, I feel like like... Obviously, there are kids who don't feel comfortable speaking out for themselves because, right. like, they're just ga- gaslit into believing it's fine or it's not a big deal or blah, 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 blah. And I think that, you know, th- there's this fine line between advocating and standing up for someone and tattling, right? right? Yeah. Oh, well, um, you you said you said we couldn't listen to music and mass listening to music. Like, okay, mind your business. Like, I'll right. I'll deal with it. It's fine. Yeah. You're okay. That's not your business. But like when you see someone actually being harmed, that's not tattling. Right. You know, you can you can say something. You can right. let a teacher know, hey, Matt just made Susie cry. Right. Or something like that. Like Something that, I, that I've noticed in high school is that, like, when when a bully has someone that I think is really fun to pick on, when they aren't given that kind of access to that person anymore, like, when right. they kind of, like, cut off the bully, yeah. they get really mad. Right. And they lash out. So, like, um, I have the personality growing up that, you know, mean people think it's really fun to pick on me. I've yeah. always had that personality. And it's okay. It's fine. I've accepted it. It's whatever. Yeah. Um, but there was this girl in high school who I thought, you know, we were friends. Um, our boyfriends at the time were friends with each other. So we did a lot together. And, you know, I thought we were really good friends. Um, come to find out that when I found out my boyfriend at the time was cheating on me, 
that she was not only covering, but like, hey, that girl over there is really cute. Oh like, God. yeah, yeah. And so I just immediately like severed that right then and there. And then I shortly after, um, like as we we're getting close to graduation, um, I met Avery, started yeah. seeing him and talking to him. And like, it was so funny because she would always encourage me to like go back to this guy like throughout our year long relationship, like with that dude. That's crazy. So when I like officially moved on from that whole group, I guess she got so mad. So she and the friends of the girl my ex cheated on me with um, went to Harris Teeter and got a cookie cake that said like prom question mark. And they put it on my car. Oh, my God. And um, they called me. This was when I, I think I had, like, TA this period. And it was with the girl's boyfriend. Yeah. Um, so she texted him to tell me, there's something in your car. Maybe you should come look. And I was like, okay. I was worried something hit my car, you know, student parking lots. And I walked down to see her. And all the friends of the girl my ex cheated on me with, just like sitting in the bed of their truck, just like kind of watching. And I was like, what is this? Like, do they think I'm an idiot? Yeah. And I walk over and I see this cookie cake and like the girl like hops out. Oh, so fun. It looks like you have a secret admirer. Like, I guess you don't need to talk to that new guy anymore because like you have a secret admirer here who must really like you. So like you should definitely like drop him and see who your secret admirer is. Like, just trying to convince me that I I don't need to talk to this new guy anymore. This is so weird. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Isn't that so weirdly obsessive? It's like so, like I don't understand what happens when people act like that. It's crazy. <laughs> like who actually spends time on that? Right. Like, like that, so much time and energy. Like the world is already a crappy place. We don't need to make it worse. Yes. <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. Do you have that? any stories? Because I feel like I've talked a lot. Oh, I have <laughs> a couple of stories. And I, this one, like the first one I'm thinking about, it was, I don't know if this is exactly like a situation where bullying was happening, but maybe you can tell me, like we can mm-hmm. decide, is this bullying or not? Yeah, I'll let you know. But I'll let when you know. When I first moved to the United States, I was an eighth grader. And then, so I was, I think this was around ninth grade. I was um, I didn't I wasn't fluent yet. I was learning the language, yeah. and my parents really pushed to, for my sister and I to kind of like get, which is a different story, like the discrimination, but like get us out of English language learners because a lot of times the students that stayed in ESL classes just ended up being really behind, and by the time graduation came, comes around, they just didn't have the same opportunities that other kids had. Yeah. So like my parents pushed and pushed and pushed for um, the school to allow us to go into the mainstream classroom even though we didn't speak English fully, which was like awful for my sister and I because we were literally in classes for at least a year where we we had no idea what was going on and we were like this close to failing, but it also pushed us to learn the language a lot faster and kind of kept us from, you know, staying behind. Yeah. But I was taking a, I think it was a calcula, calculus, calculus class with a teacher yeah. who was very well revered. Like she had awards for being teacher of the year. She oh. was just like, she had a really good reputation, but she was kind of mean. She had favorite favorites. And so it was like very, very clear, very clear if you were in her class, who she liked and who she did not like and why, I had no clue. But for some reason, I was, re- I was really shy. I was struggling in her class because I didn't like math. Um, and so anytime that I had any work that I needed to make up, I left math until the very end because I was just like avoiding it. Like I literally shed tears in her class taking exams because it was so difficult and I couldn't communicate myself to be like, I don't understand. And also she was a very approachable. Um, so there's this one time where I had a lot of work to make up for her and I like I was on my way to go talk to her and I found her at the counselor just talking crap about a student. Like she was like this student, this a student, like just talking crap. and. Uh, I had no idea she was talking about me, but she was. So when I walk into the counselor's office, the counselor goes, this Brenda, is this who you're talking about? And she turns around, looks at me and just like starts going off and like, you haven't done this. And just like lay, lay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 She just like starts going off. And at this point, like, because I had already dealt with some of her, like just being mean in the classroom, not like showing favoritism, like not giving me a lot of the help that I needed, but giving it to other people kind of situation. So I just like with the little English or like my broken English, I just like told her, you know, like this isn't okay. 
I explained kind of the situation and then I just went in the bathroom and cried. And then I told my dad and my dad went into the school and talked to her. But yeah, and, and, and talked to the to the teacher. So that kind of stopped. Like she changed the way that she would treat me. But I remember going in after school to ask for help with my best friend and she loved my best friend for whatever reason. And she did not like me. So she'd be like, hi, sweetie, how are you? To my friend and like, yeah, come here, I'll help you. And then she'd look at me and be like, what do you need? So, and, and was it just a problem? Oh. I don't know. And, 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 you know, they say that bullying is supposed to be like a repeated situation, like it repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know. What do you think? Is that no, like? yeah. She was bullying you. She was being mean to you. It's awful. It was That's awful. That's so mean. So, I ended up dropping her class. I feel like, and like, we were both teachers. I feel like when it comes to teachers, there are people who go into the profession because like they love it they love teaching they love helping they love helping kids kids the like, students yes yeah. like the, the students are the best part of their day and then there are other teachers who go in because they never outgrew their mean girl face right and like, like they back like high school like <laughs> back at high school yes yeah. yes because yes. they never grew out of it right and um even like in schools a lot of kids don't know this but even teachers sometimes bully each other right because like i told yes. you i've always had the personality that people are always like they just think i'm annoying you know or obnoxious and i'm just living my best life yes, you like are. you know i just i just love life yeah. a lot and that's okay and some people the the people that appreciate it are my kind of people like yeah. you yeah but i remember when i started at our school i was the youngest by like I don't. I don't want to By say the lot. name. Yeah, I don't want to say like the lifers. <laughs> like, I was trying not to say the name of the school. Yeah. But like you know, the oldest person in our department was in their what sixties. Yeah. And which is they they were a phenomenal human being. I loved that man. But like most of our department was a lot older than me. And when I started, the next oldest woman pulled me aside and literally said, "Hey, I'm just letting you know." you're probably going to get picked on. And I said, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? I just, this is not the way to start my first yeah. week. And she's like, yeah, um, I'm just letting you know that when I was first hired, the older women in the department were really mean to me. You know, they picked on my clothes. They would like talk about me in the hallways, like, and I would always hear them. You know, they, they just, you know, some older women teachers, can't accept that they're not like the new young teacher anymore. This is grown as adult. Yeah, I don't understand it. Yes, <laughs> and I was like, no, nah. like that's always whenever I see or hear red flags, like my first instinct is, nah, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> and then come like, oh my god, how many times did I walk into your classroom in tears? <laughs> it's not like they're being so mean to me. Like just one example to give everyone is that they thought I was so annoying that no other teacher would possibly want to be my friend. So like there was my like, because at the time, I feel like we became even closer after we quit. Right. Because at, at the time, I think that your teacher bestie was the guy in your department mm -hmm. and my teacher bestie was the guy in my department. Mm -hmm. And everyone called my teacher bestie the hermit because he like didn't really talk to anybody. He kind of stayed in his room. Yeah. Um. But he was also the only, the person in my department who's closest to my age that I would, right. like, find common ground with. And we became very close. Like, we're so close. Like, he was just at my house a few weeks ago. Right. But these women who he, he would call them the clucking hens, <laughs> <laughs> um, they, like, couldn't believe that we were actually friends. Like, to this day, I still think they, like, genuinely believe that it was all in my head that they would talk about it in the hallway and they would like, oh, poor him. Like, she just like, she won't leave, ha her, like she like... won't just leave him alone. Can't understand that he just wants to be left alone. And like, they just genuinely didn't believe we were actually friends. This is awful. Like, isn't I don't like, understand. Isn't that it's crazy? It's awful. Like, it is awful that this, these are people teaching our kids. Yeah. Not to yes. be bullies. Like, but I feel like, like at this, at the same time, because I, I feel like, I feel it, it's these individuals who give teachers the bad name, right? Because right? in my department, there was, what, 22 people? Yeah. Three of them were really mean. Uh, four. Yeah. <laughs> four. Three or four of them were really mean. Right. So, like, 
I, I think there's a smaller percentage of teachers who actually like act that. like this. Yeah. But they're the ones that people talk about, right. you know? And I just can't believe when I hear stories that there are, in my experience, for the most part, I, I had really good um, co-workers, you know, that were in my department, people in my department that were great people to be around. But I do hear, hear stories like that, and it's just hard for me to believe. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. I actually have a story okay, of like, the times when students bully the teachers because oh my gosh because okay, i think yeah. of like bullying also you know like it's like it's the person needs to be in a position uh, in a vulnerable position and i yeah. think teachers we are because at any point we can do something that gets us fired you know yeah. like we always feel yeah. i always felt like oh my god like i can't do anything or i'm gonna get fired especially in the district like districts vary but in the district where you yeah know, i taught it was very much like Never know when you're going to be fired. Everyone wants to work here. You're replaceable. Oh, really? We have 3,000 openings. Right. Who's replacing? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's not exaggerating either. When I, when we left, there were 3,000 vacancies. Which is insane. Yeah. Continue. Continue. But yeah, I had a situation where I, a parent and a, and a teacher, uh, I, mean, I mean, a parent and a student bullied me. But that's not the story I'm talking about. I'm talking about a story that my mom lived in when she lived in another state. Okay, okay. Uh, and it was, just, it was she taught in middle school. And she was actually a paraeducator in middle school. And Para, so, sorry, yeah, I'd say that. Go ahead. <laughs> a couple of students got caught. There was a teacher, a young teacher. He was like 25 and, you know, handsome. So attractive teacher. And so, you know, so middle school girls, you oh, know, they're kind of no. crazy about him. So they found, I don't remember the exact details, but a teacher found a notebook that these few girls had with very inappropriate stuff about the teacher. So oh. when they got caught, instead of just like saying, hey, yeah, like we did this, this happened, they blamed the teacher. They said that the teacher had been sexually harassing harassing them. And so this whole investigation was opened up. The teacher had to go to, I don't know how they deal with that kind of stuff. So eventually the truth came out and we figured out that it was all lies. And then the students were just oh. like trying to cover their butts, right? And so they got a kind of a slap on the wrist kind of situation. But like this teacher, like his life could have been completely exactly. ruined. His reputation, lose his license. I that, that stuff to me is crazy too. That's that's like the it's our kids, the utter lack, like the the complete disregard for another person's life, livelihood, reputation. Like I I don't understand it. Right. Like, it just it leaves me so speechless. Like yeah. I don't know what to say. Yeah. You know, it just it absolutely blows my mind. Um, and you know what we were just saying about like it's it's a smaller percentage of people who go into teaching because they just like never outlived or never grew out of their queen bee mentality kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's also so much the case when it comes to administration. When, when we were teaching, and it was in the middle of COVID, and we were still, like, districts were trying to figure out how to get us back into the classroom. Um, parents got to choose, do I want to send my kids physically in school, or do I want them to stay online? Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, halfway through the semester, the district was like, hey, guys, if you, if you want to change your mind, you can. So, like, if they switched into an in-person class, um, and their teacher was designated for virtual, they had to switch into a completely different teacher's class. And depending on what teacher had how many kids, some of their schedules were completely changed. Like it was the most inconvenient and stupid decision I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah. what? Like we had two weeks of the kids just like of counselors just trying to fit the kids somewhere based on whatever what a mess. whatever the parents wanted to change to mid semester. Yeah. Crazy. So we got and you can confirm, we got emails from the counselors saying, Hey, you might see some kids show up on your roster. They may stay, they may go away. If you don't see them, we probably just like if they don't come to your class, we might have just put them there to like have them somewhere until we can figure out their real schedule. <laughs> like you remember. Uh, yes. I was on maternity leave, but oh, I yeah, you were. I remember, oh. like, I remember hearing about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They were like, if you see kids on your roster and they don't come to class, don't panic because they might just be in your class as a placeholder. Right. So I had a couple kids that I noticed were on my roster as placeholders. So after two days of them being on my placeholders or what I thought was a placeholder, like I didn't panic because the counselor said, hey, this is normal. So all of a sudden the next day, like after two days, 
I get this email from a parent who was like, do you mind telling me why my kid has been enrolled in your class for two days and you haven't reached out and you haven't greeted him and you haven't emailed him and you have blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't sure. It's a little crazy with schedule changes right now. I wasn't sure if he was really in my class or if they were still changing his schedule around. He hasn't come to my class at all. So I wasn't sure if he was staying or not. She's like, well, you didn't reach out to him to tell him how to get to your virtual class. And I said, well, the procedures are the same for every teacher. Like we had to make these little virtual classrooms with links to all of our remember our, our Google classrooms yep. and like step-by-step instructions on how to do what. And he never joined, even though my instructions are on there, like every other teacher has to have those exact instructions. Right. So if he got switched into any other classes also, he would have the same thing. Right. Um and he never joined. I said, like, ma'am, this is a right, fault. Right, right. Like, I was supposed to provide the links and the instructions to get to class, and he didn't follow any of it. So how was I supposed to know? Well, you could have emailed him, and you could have done this and blah, blah, blah. I said, I'm sorry. It's a little crazy time. I genuinely just was not aware he was staying in my class. Um, but I would love to give him all the information and all this. And I'll, I'll personally send you the links, blah, blah, blah. Like we weren't trying to leave him out. It's just a little bit of a crazy time right now. Not sure which kids are staying and which kids aren't. Um, here's all the information. And he still just didn't show up to class, the, ne- the next class. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So don't hear from the parent. I like send another email to mom that's like, hey, just want to see if any of the links weren't working. Still didn't see him for class today. Like, just checking. Is there anything else that I can do for you? Don't hear from her before I go home for the day. So, okay, I guess I'll just see her in the morning. So, I get there. I get to school the next day. And I have, like, four or five emails from this woman. Who, I guess she emailed me, like, at six, five or six o'clock. Emma's like, I don't remember the excuse of like why he didn't show up. It doesn't really matter. Like whatever. It was a crazy week. Um, but then she emailed me again, like 45 minutes later. That was like, why haven't you responded? Red flag. And then she emailed me again, like 45 minutes later, like, why are you not responding? And then she emailed me again, ma'am, like freaking out at me. This is at what? 845 at night. Right. Just berating me for not responding to her emails at dinner time and so you know i got to school at what was it 6 45 5 45 was it yeah i can't remember early. i don't remember what, early. i don't remember what time we were supposed to get there it might i don't remember it was six, 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 six something six yeah. forty five, i think yeah and immediately responded like hey i'm so sorry i left school at this time and i just got here in the morning at 6 45 so i'm responding back to your email here are the answers to the questions you had. Can't wait to see your son in class. That I was done. Well, then I get another email that was like, well, I'm a principal at an elementary school down the road, and I always expect my employees to be able to check their emails at night and be ready to respond to whatever parents need oh, at oh, all hours. And I was like, race, ma'am. no. And I, I just like very kindly and i would always have my teacher bestie read my emails to make sure they weren't sassy because like have a little bit of a temper yeah um and i just kind of responded back i that's so great for them um unfortunately my boundaries are that when i go home that's my home time that's my family time i responded to at 6 45 in the morning mm-hmm. um with all the answers to your questions i'm sorry if that's not enough but i don't check my emails when i go home yeah she came down to the school. First of all, if you're a principal, how do you not know to check the freaking virtual classrooms that everyone in the county is supposed to have? Like, right. you didn't tell your kid to check it and that, like, what? Second of all, bless the hearts of the teachers at her school. <laughs> but she came down to the school because I guess our principals were friends, like she and our principal were friends, just to talk about how I needed to fix my priorities because I wasn't willing to, I think they had to talk, I think well, like her elementary school was also a feeder school into the the lifers, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but she like made a point to talk to him about how I needed to fix my priorities because I made her feel like her child wasn't my first priority, which I'm sorry, parents. Um, 
your yeah, kids' teachers well. have their own families and have their own thing. Like, we love your kids. We really do. But they're not our first priority in our lives. And they shouldn't be. You know, right. our own family should be. Our own lives should be. Like, that shouldn't be a hot take. Right. That shouldn't be a controversial issue. Right, and then like, we're wondering why there's so many teachers with, like, that want to quit. Why do we have 3,000 like, vacancies? Having mental breakdowns, it's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, absolutely wild, yeah. but, you it's know. It's crazy to me that she was a principal because right. my story, like, the one that almost me- made me quit teaching at some point also happened by a parent who was a teacher. Really? So, uh, yeah. Okay. This this story to me was, it was when I had just started posting on social media, right? So we had, like, a situation happening with, like, a lot of TikTok, a lot of teachers joined TikTok. Yeah. And they were, like, you know, doing whatever they're doing. And yeah, yeah, The whole TikTok community, it's grown a lot. But this was the very beginning, like, when there wasn't a lot of teachers out there. And, like, TikTok was new and it was, like, evil, you know, like, for in the teaching world. And so... um I had a student who I had had in a previous class, a previous year. We had a great relationship. And then in this specific class, I caught her cheating. And to me, like that happened, students cheating happens a lot. Mm-hmm. We have a policy that we, we follow. So I follow the policy. You know, I like, she was cheating when the, and she had answers on her watch. So I asked for her watch. I put it away. Um, and then at the end of the day, this was a Friday. So it was like the very last class on a Friday. I just told her what happened. I'm like, Hey, like, why were you cheating? And she's like, well, I just really stressed, really angry. So I'm like, I completely understand that. I'm sorry. I'm just, just so you know, this is what happens. You get a zero, but you can retake. And I just explained like the same thing that happens with every single student. Exactly. I made the mistake of not calling the parent that Friday night because Mm -hmm. it was like, okay, I'm tired. I'm going home. I'm going to address it on Monday morning. That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Because when I came back on Friday um, or on Monday morning, I had a very angry email from from the parent, from the mom, who was like, I can't believe you didn't tell me. Like, you, she's been stressed the whole... And I'm like, I understand. I should have probably addressed that. So then I call her. The mom is extremely rude over the phone. She hang, hangs up on me. And when I address what? her, she hangs up on me. Like, I was in the middle of telling her something and just hung up on me so i like emailed her and my it's not a supervisor what's it called the uh, admin yeah I, I and my admin and kind of explained what happened and then i said that she hung up the phone before i had the opportunity to tell her what we were going to address okay what well, what ends up happening is that when i see the student in class in that um afternoon i pull her out just to like explain the situation again and she completely completely denies that she had cheated She's saying that I was lying about the situation, that she was not cheating. I'm like, I wish I had recorded this conversation. Um, and so then it just became a situation where the parent was like after me for that. Like she just had, it was a bad blood for, you know, for whatever situation, for whatever reason. And um, uh, she took one of the TikToks that I had posted recently that had nothing to do with her daughter, sent it to my principal, said that I, ha- I was bullying her, her daughter. And my principal, who at the time didn't really know me, um, pulled me into his office, told me that he needed to file a complaint with human resources and kind of made me believe that, that there was a possibility that, I'm, that I might lose my job. He was the worst principal ever. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> yeah, I was not <laughs> a fan. Most people weren't. <laughs> I was not a fan, yeah. And so then, uh, of course, because with situations like this, the situation usually repeats itself. Just a couple of weeks later, I caught the student cheating again. And this time I had witnesses, like the students around me. It was like she had a a piece of paper under her paper and she asked me a question and I couldn't see it because I'm literally almost a little bit blind. So I asked her for the paper and she was like pulling it from me. And I was like, oh, no. So I was like, let me see the paper. And when I pulled it, the answers were on the bottom. How do you even respond to that? I don't know. The parents know sometimes, especially in situations like those where they're repeated, like the parents know. And if you're covering for your child, you're doing them such a huge disservice for their future. Because then they they carry those actions and they carry the deceitfulness and the shadiness into adulthood. And the belief that they can get away with anything. Right. And then when they can, now now they're in jail. (laughs) (laughs) Channel, that's I have so a, an extra situation that's though. Like a parent like trying to scare their kid. You do this and you're going to jail. <laughs> or like her arms were cut off, yeah. her legs were cut off. Her, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. but like no, seriously, like when when those kinds of things are nipped in the butt, it kind of makes for mean girl adults. Yeah, like I, uh, <laughs> I oh my god, I'm, I can already feel myself like getting upset and crying. I, I tell this, I've told this story to so many people in my personal life. Yeah, and it happened now what two years ago, and I'm always like I'm over it, I'm okay, and then I tell it and I start crying again. PTSD. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, see, see, that's the thing with bullying, though. It like it stays with you. It breaks you down. It can cause psychological. Like it's not. Yeah. Don't bully. So I, I had, um, I was really heavily bullied in my adult life in our new field of work. Yeah. Um, and we're not going to do like names or anything like that, cause, you know, privacy matters, and like it's not a big thing. I'm not trying to, you know cancel anyone i'm just trying to talk about my own experience um there was a a a project that i i started i came up with it i created it and like i don't even know where to start with this story because there's there's so much crap after a little while of being on this project and a couple friends showing interest that they wanted to do it with me um this company wanted to partner on it and this is a, like a whole other story, but I was kind of bamboozled into kind of signing the rights away. I was gaslit into believing this is how things are done. And it wasn't. And you live and you learn. It is what it is. Um, That's not the point of this story. But, you know, once this company kind of took over, um, it was me and three other people. So there was four of us. And I had this mentality that, you know, I wanted this project to last forever. So in my mind, we were all going to be the four best friends that ever had been forever like these were my lifelong friends um and after a while like it already started off very strange like the company made us do these videos that were like they would record each of us individually and they're like who do you think is the most dramatic out of the four of you and I'm like why are you asking us that like that feels like a really rude question or like yeah. who do you think is the laziest or like th- like things like that was a drama almost. right like yeah. it was very strange and I didn't like that and like i remember i even called you after it happened yeah i'm like i don't feel good about this yeah i need you to watch it and tell me if i'm like crazy or not and like since then i don't know like it felt really fun for a while but then all of a sudden things just started feeling weird and different and you know i'm a i'm I'm an overthinker you know sometimes there are things in my head so like i would always ask my friends like hey is everything okay like am I am I crazy or something's feeling off like oh no you're, you're everything's fine oh, okay cool and then um this part isn't my story to tell but one of the individuals got was asked to leave like there there was an issue the other two didn't want to work with this person anymore um the company said hey let's have a meeting to talk about it I they said hey let's do five o'clock today I said hey I have an appointment I can't do that and they said nope too bad that's when we're doing it and I said okay like I was doing laser hair removal so it was like a lot of pain like I couldn't sit there and converse with people so I at least listened to the meeting and it literally turned into just everyone else tearing this person down and telling them all the reasons they didn't want to associate with them and didn't want to work with them like it was brutal Mm -hmm. it was so unfair and I was just in awe that the company let this happen Mm -hmm. um and afterwards I was outvoted they were asked to leave and after that like everything just felt so tense so awkward and I'm like I started really thinking like it, there's no way it's just in my head you know mm-hmm. like something's wrong so I asked everyone again like is everything good is everything yeah everything's fine well okay sure so the next time we got together to do this project we had a guest come in to fill that fourth spot since our fourth person was asked to leave and uh, to do like a bonding kind of thing because it had been a emotional time asking one of our friends to leave. Uh, we decided to all go to Disney World. And we all wanted to do vlogs for Disney. And which, you know, we, there's only so many rides at Disney. Like all Disney vlogs at some point are all the same, you know. Right. And like I was having like technical issues that morning because my fast passes weren't working. And then my app kept crashing and it was so funny. And of course, one of the other people like made sure to document it all, which is fine. Like, I don't care. Whatever. Like, we were all just laughing about it happening to me. Um, And we would do that all day. And while we were waiting in line for the Pirates of the Caribbean line ride, um, the guest that we had said something really funny, right? And it was on camera for one of the other vlogs. And I was like, oh, that's hilarious. Like, do you mind repeating that? And then all of a sudden, they just jumped down my throat about like, what are you trying to copy her vlog? And I was like, no, it's no, I'm sorry. Like, I wasn't trying to overstep or anything. And they're like, well, your vlog's just going to be the same as mine. Like, and I'm like, well, We're it's together. Disney. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it's all the same anyways. And I said, okay, that's fine. Like, I'll just delete the clip. Like, it's not a big deal. I think it's weird that, like, you wanted to record all the crazy stuff that was happening to me today, but I can't have one funny line that's the same. But, like, whatever, it's fine. I deleted it. But then they wouldn't let it go. And the girl, the other girl just kept hounding me about, like, how I'm a bad friend because why would I try to copy her vlog? And if I have the same vlog as her, no one will watch her vlog. They'll want to watch my vlog. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me, but okay. But they wouldn't drop it. And I finally just put my foot down and I was like, I don't know what your problem is, but I deleted the clip five minutes ago and you're still like yelling at me. I don't understand what your issue is or what the problem is, but just drop it. Like we're adults, this is childish. I don't understand why you're still berating me. I already deleted it. I already said I was sorry. Just leave me alone about it. Yeah. Like, I have a little bit of temper. I told you that. I have a little bit of a temper. Um, and then it was like, oh, okay, that's fine. And like, and they just kept, okay, look who's finally standing up for herself kind of a thing. And I, like, something just felt so wrong. Right. Oh, my God, I can already feel it. You gut feeling telling you. So we, um, we get on the ride and... I, you know, how part of the Caribbean ride is there's four of us just scrunched together. And one of them, I don't know if this was on purpose or on accident. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, But they just kind of reach their arms out onto the railing with their phone. And they open it up to a group message of the three of them just talking about how annoying I am and how much they hate me. And, um how like they're not really my friend about how they purposely went all day trying to stir the pot and upset me whether it was talking about my friends or talking about people like and then it started making sense some of the things and some of the people that they were talking about like why how it even came up and I was just um absolutely devastated because I thought these people were my friends and so I, I literally spent the entire Pirates of the Caribbean ride just sobbing silently to myself, watching them text each other about how they thought I was crying because I had to delete that stupid vlog clip. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. So I got off the ride and I immediately, like my phone was dying, but I wanted to get an Uber to get out of there and go back to our Airbnb. Um, But my phone was dying, so I just immediately got off the ride, went to go find a plug in the wall, and plugged my phone in. And I was just planning on waiting a few minutes until it was good enough to call an Uber, wait for an Uber, get to the front of the park, and things like that. Um, Because, you know, safety, I never want to get into an Uber without a phone battery. And while I was there, again, they still think I'm, I guess they still think I'm upset about the stupid vlog video or something. I don't know. Right. Um... And so they text me and they're like, come on, we're going to be late to our fast pass. Like, hurry up, like, whatever. And I just texted them, no, I, I don't want to go with you. I thought you guys were my friends. I'm not going to go spend the day at Disney with people who are talking about me like that. Like, Why are you there? And they're like, they're using you. Right. And they're like, what are you talking about? I said, I saw the group message. I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to be your friend. Like, I'm going home. I don't want to be here anymore. And then one of them comes up to me. And, like, tries to hug me. And I'm like, don't touch me. Like, I don't... And she's like, well, what are you talking about? What group message? There's no group message. And I said, I saw it. Like, I saw it with my own eyes. And I'll never forget this. She looked in my eyes and she said, you're so paranoid. You need therapy. Oh, my God. And, like, then I just started doubting myself. Like, she gaslit me to the point that I went up to the rest of the group and apologized for causing a scene. Talk about emotional abuse. And so I reached out to the fourth friend who, you know, was asked to leave. And I just said, I just want to run something by you. Like, I feel like I'm going crazy. I just want your your perspective idea. And he said, you know, Rebecca, I'm really sorry to tell you this. But um, that was the second group chat that was created because I was a part of the first. And... um. He said that there was a time right after that I quit teaching where I was, you know, really stressed out that I made the wrong choice and really, you know, just kind of panicking that I, you know, ruined my life. And uh, he said that, you know, 
it started out as them, at least he says that it started out as them being really worried that I was kind of spiraling, but that it just kind of progressively got meaner and meaner and meaner and that he just never thought to kind of put a stop to it. And then after he was asked to leave, they created a new one with um, other people instead. And so I just like in that moment felt very uncomfortable and I felt like I was just bothering everyone just by being there and by being present. So I just tried to stay like to myself and I just tried to kind of, um, you know, not bother anyone, not talk to anyone. Because again, like I felt like just my presence was was bothering people. And so the entire next day when we had to do these photo shoots, like I just tried to stay in my lane and stay in my corner and um because our our flights were all the very next day and so um that night when I was getting ready to go to bed and getting my stuff all packed up probably at what 10 o'clock at night maybe later um one of the one of the girls just kind of barged into my room and just started berating me for not hanging out with them that day And she was basically, like, accusing me of being stuck up and snobby because, what, you didn't want to hang out with us today? You didn't come out of your room at all. And I just kind of said, I didn't want to bother anybody. Like, I I don't understand why you even are mad that I, like, you clearly don't like me. You don't want to be my friend. Why are you mad that I stayed in my room all day? Like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I said, the group message. And she told me again, she looked me in the eyes and she said, there's no group message. You're so paranoid that you need therapy. And I said, no, and you're not going to gaslight me again. Like I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw not, I guess she thought that I just saw the notification of it pop up. But she's like, oh, you, you saw the whole thing? I said, yes, I saw the group message. Oh, well, then her tone, like complete 180 tone flipped, demeanor flipped. Oh, you saw it? Yeah, we have a group message. And then just started laughing at me about how I thought we were really friends and um, how we hadn't been friends in a really long time. And that basically she was just using me because I got her opportunities and stuff. And um, she said, you know, there was one day months ago where I needed to talk to you But you had family emergencies, you had a funeral to go to, you had stuff going on with your husband, and you said that you couldn't, like, you couldn't take on my issues. So I decided in that moment that we weren't really friends. But you got me a lot of stuff and opportunities, so, you know, here I am, kind of thing. And then she, like, she called her mom to laugh at me and just boast to her mom. Or somebody who was some family member I heard her on the phone with. Just just making fun of how upset I was. And how much I was crying. And she laughed about like... She even said something about like, oh, maybe I'll hit her kind of thing. And I felt so unsafe and so scared. And so I just called the company and I was like, you have to get me out of here. Like, I feel so unsafe and I want to leave. And I can't stay in this Airbnb and then they kind of made me do exactly what they had the person who was asked to leave do. And we all had to sit on the phone and they sat on the phone with us while one of them literally blocked me in my room like she was sitting in the doorway. I couldn't even leave. I felt so unsafe. And I had to just listen to them as they told me all the reasons they didn't like me and all the things that they hated about me. All, all that night really did, though, was um, encourage them to not hide them being mean to me anymore. Um, my ED that I struggled with in high school came back really badly. Like, I was in a really bad place mentally. Like, they thought I was spiraling when I quit my job. Oh, wow. Was this bad? Um but yeah, it, it just continued all summer and eventually I just kind of put my foot down and I begged the company to like do something and the, com- the company literally just told me, well, you make us a lot of money um, and you don't have to like your coworkers. So, you know, 
you can just push through for a weekend a month and just like do it for the paycheck because you make us a lot of money. And um, eventually I just kind of had enough and I put my foot down and I said like, I want everyone who is involved in this, like I want them gone. Like I can't do this anymore. It's like just getting worse. I'm just feeling worse and worse. Like they're just mean to my face now. Like I don't, I don't, I don't want to be here. So either they're gone or I'm gone. And they called my bluff. The company was like, no, nah, you're not leaving. And then I, I told them I, I told them I was done. And then I spent the next few months getting threats by like completely made up accusations. Like they tried threatening me with Avery. Like, oh, one time your husband like defined legal terms for us on Zoom. And I guess like, and I bet that we could spin that to be giving legal advice over state lines. And it would be such a shame if like, because of all this, your husband lost his law license. So maybe you should just stay. And it was, it was so crazy. Like the gaslighting, the threats, like it was just such a mess. I ended up having to spend thousands of dollars on an entertainment attorney just to free myself. Um, but yeah, that was like the worst experience of my life. <laughs> And a prime example of uh, when you don't nip bullying in the bud. Avery always says I say that wrong. Nip it in the bud. <laughs> that it just kind of translates to, uh, it just kind of follows you, you know, to adulthood. And what's, what's really frustrating about like that whole situation that I experienced is, one, I still get so many messages from people who are like, oh, I found you on this project and I love it so much. Like, it, it feels so frustrating to have people come to me and say like, oh, this project that was yours and you had stolen from and you were bullied off of, like, this is so great and I'm just starting it and I love you on it. And like, I hate that my face and that I'm still helping them succeed in that way. Like, that just frustrates me so much. I know the people don't know, like, they don't know and they don't mean it. But, like, it hurts me to my core. Or, like, I don't look like any of the other people. Like, we all look, look very different, all of us that were on the project. But, you know, there's one person who I, I guess, look similar enough to in that we, like, are both white and we have brown hair. <laughs> and so, like, I guess this person got in trouble for, you know, she got canceled a couple months ago. And because we're both white with brown hair and we were on the same project, like, I get tagged in things all the time of people, like, thinking I'm her and calling me out for her comments. Like, I did a brand deal with, like, a really important brand that I was really excited to work with. And there are comments of, like, me on their page of them asking about, oh, well, does she blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't want to give too much, you know, identifying information or anything like that. But, well, does she blah, 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 like repeating back what this person said and got in trouble for. And I responded back like, I'm not, I'm not that person. Like, that's not me. I'm a completely different human and individual. And it like, it just really sucks that, you know, I was brutalized and bullied and humiliated and not only that, like, I can't, I feel like I can't escape them. And I feel like I can't get away. And then not only that, I'm being pulled into their other issues. Like, it's just, it's a mess, you know? And it's it's so unfair. And I'm going to stop rambling about it now because I'm going to start crying again. And I, <laughs> I really don't want to. And it's really valuable to, valuable to me to talk about, like, these kinds of things with you. Because, like, not only have, like... You've known me the longest, not only like online, but in person out of anyone else on social media, like you know me. Right. And so like, you know if I'm being dramatic or you know if I like, and you know the people involved too. Well, and the first thing that like, the thing that I know about you is also that you're the kind of person, you know, like when we're talking, especially about supporting other women, you're the kind of person, like we talked about it the other day where you're like, Hey, like, hop on my back. Like, yeah. there's room for all of us. Let's go. Let's do this together. Like, you literally like, will grab that's people. That's so validating to, like, hear that come out of your mouth. Yeah, and that's what I've observed about you. You've done that with me. You're like, come on, like, let's do this together. Like, let's let's keep pushing. Like, there's room for everybody at the top, you know? And so, like, you are that kind of person. Thanks. <laughs> I just, like, I, honestly, the, like, the, the thing that just keeps popping in my mind is that I can't believe, well, first of all, talk about emotional abuse and yeah. gaslighting somebody. <laughs> and second of all, like, I can't believe that these are grown 
as people. So like, I just go back to like, it starts in the playground. And I think that there's like, you're either a, a bully, you're being bullied, you're standing up for somebody or if, or you're a passive bystander. And if you're a passive bystander, then you're part of the problem. So I think that, you know, like these kind of situations, especially bullying, we need to stand up for yeah. when we see it. Yeah. And we need to speak out for ourselves and we need to trust our gut. Yeah. I feel like there's also this idea of like grown adults right. where it's like, oh, I would I would never bully someone who for being neurodivergent or autistic or anything like that but then they like get in their little circles and they're like oh can you believe this person has these weird interests or can you believe this person like is hyperactive like you know they're they're taking apart the the symptoms of these disabilities and these you know adhd autism all these things and they're they're really quick to say oh i would never make fun of someone who has this diagnosis but right. they'll make fun of the symptoms right and they like they think it's so funny and they think it's so quirky but it's just mean right it's so mean it's mean and it's unproductive and unnecessary but i guess the whole the whole point of this because we're running out of time you have to go to an appointment <laughs> is to really just you know raise awareness that this isn't something that just stops when kids leave the playroom or the playground or stops when people you know graduate high school like this is something that if it's not nipped in the butt if you don't say something whether it's happening to you or if you see it happening to someone else like this really becomes an adult problem like it doesn't stop if someone doesn't make it stop Mm -hmm. so you know just trying to make people feel like if it's happening to you you're not alone you know it it happens to it happens to way more people than it really should and to help encourage people that you know again if you see something say something like you never know if you're you could be saving someone's life saving someone's sanity you know it's important to do that so yeah the the, like the point is to create a culture where there's kindness and acceptance exactly inclusion and there's really there's so much more that we can add we ran out a little bit of time because we have appointments to get to um so I definitely want to do like another episode on this sometime in the future, like maybe exploring more cyberbullying or like other things like that. But there there really is so much that we could continue to say. We just unfortunately do not have the time to do that today. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. And I hope to see you all next week. Bye, my lovelies. Bye.